the uh, Korean and English speaking Asian. Yeah. The dramatic growth of Christianity in Korea has nurtured a significant growth of Korean churches in our area and throughout the U.S. Many second generation Asians are now coming together to preserve their Asian identity and nurture ministry that can transition Christian vitality from the first generation peoples to the succeeding generations. Sun Chan Ra will now give us a brief focus on this critical need for all people groups uh, in this connection. Can we thank Judy for the work she's doing? She's not getting a lot of work. I hope that gets me an extra half a minute. No laughing, that I'm losing time. Uh, we're learning from each other here. It's a good thing that we're learning from each other. In 1965, the Immigration and Nat Nationality Act changed the, the course of immigration in the United States. And what we saw was the beginning of the influx of the non-European immigrants into our country. And that's what we are here, the non-European immigrants into our country. And in the Korean community, as a result of that change in the, American, um, the United States policy on immigration, what we saw was, especially in the 70s and the 90s, a high, 80s and 90s, a high in, influx of Korean immigrants. And this high influx of Korean immigrants led to a number of successful church plants in the Korean American community. Uh, the percentages that we've seen in, this, in the 80s and 90s is that 75% of first generation Korean Americans, that's three out of four first generation Korean Americans, were actively involved in churches. We're not talking about Sunday uh, every once in a while, we're not talking about Easter and Christmas type Christians, but close to three out of four Koreans, uh, immigrant Koreans, were active in churches. Uh, some of that is related to what we were talking about a little bit earlier, uh, that there has been a growth of the, a revival in Korea, and that's kind of spilled over into the growth of Korean churches in the United States. However, uh, not all of it is due to that, because 40% of the people coming to the United States were Christians, but 75% of Koreans in the United States were Christians. So there was something going on in addition to not just people transplanting from Korea to the United States, but there was some evangelism going on. Something good was happening. And, and that factor, the, the factors of this growth in first generation of Korean churches are some of the factors that are work in all of our different communities, in the Brazilian community, in the Asian community, in the Caribbean communities, all of our different communities, we have seen people who might not have been Christians in the homeland, who might not even have thought about Christianity, have become Christians here. And that's the, the joy, that's part of the quiet revival that we've seen immigrant churches impact our communities as they've come to the United States. The transition though that I want to challenge us on is how do we make that transition from success in the first generation and what are we seeing in the second generation? I'm, a, I'm kind of one of those in-between people. I came to the United States when I was six years old. My English is, is good enough. Uh, my, my Korean is, is not good enough, according to my parents. But um, if, if, I, if I'm the person that is kind of in-between these generations, what I'm seeing is the first generation has a lot of needs. There's a lot of issues that the first generation has to deal with. This transition to a new nation and a new country. Uh, but what happens in the process of that is the second generation going to get lost. Are your children going to be in church a generation from now? In the Korean community, and actually actually in the larger Asian American community, what we have found is that there is a significant drop off in second generation Asians from their parents. So if the parents are attending ch uh, churches, 75% of Koreans are in churches in the first generation, the second generation numbers are significantly lower than that. A, ter a phrase has been uh, a term, and that's called the silent exodus. Because the children of immigrants are leaving in significant numbers, and we don't know where they're going. We thought at first they were going to white churches, but we looked and they weren't there. We thought at first they were going to other places, we looked and they weren't there. So where did they go? It's been a silent exodus in the Asian community, where second generation, English speaking Asian, ch the children of these successful immigrant churches are disappearing. And those of you here who are in these wonderful, successful first generation churches, your concern is what, what happens to our children. What happens to our children? Are they going to have this silent exodus? Are they going to disappear, go away to college, or go away to a different part of the country, and never set foot in a church again? Is that, that's a very much a concern for every immigrant group here. In your, in your booklet there, there's a, uh, an outline of about four or five different models of ministry that, that we have seen in Boston, four or five different ways that we have seen this transition from first to second generation. And there are these different ways that we can approach uh, reaching the second generation for, of, of, the immigrant, uh, of, the, of the immigrants. Uh, but I want to talk some about the challenges, because these are things that we, we need to be concerned about. As we make this transition, 
uh, we're getting a, a crisis situation. And, and some of you have already seen this, where your children are disappearing. Your children are no longer in the church. This is a crisis situation. But a crisis is also an opportunity. An opportunity for God to do something magnificent and spectacular and amazing in the midst of us. And that's what I think Pastor Ron Stevens was talking about. Something spectacular that crosses the cultures, that crosses the different immigrant groups. God's doing something a, on a kind of a common level in our immigrant churches. But God, I think, wants to do something on a common level in the second generation churches as well. Here's the challenge for us then. The way I look at it was that in World War II, there was a, a battle that was raging. The forces of good, if we're going to put it in these terms, unfortunately, but the forces of good were the allied forces that needed to, to come against the forces of evil in, in Nazi Germany. But Nazi Germany had pretty much taken over all of the continent of Europe. And the, the, uh, the allies didn't have a, a stronghold or a foothold. So they sent waves of soldiers on the beaches of Normandy. And we've seen movies where we've seen the waves of soldiers come and, and try to establish a bunker or a barricade on the, on the beaches of, of Normandy. And we know that, that many, many lives were lost because this was the brutalest of all battles in World War II. Many lives were lost on the beaches of Normandy. But it was in that bunker, that first establishment of that bunker, that gave us the strength to move on and to take the next battle. The first generation immigrant church were those who died on the beaches or are dying on the beaches of Normandy. Many of you here have sacrificed your lives, you've given your heart, you've given all your lives so that your children can take the next stage in battle. And I want to thank you as one of your children. Thank you for the ways you have died on the battle lines for us. You came to this country, you sacrificed much, and you built a bunker so that we had a safe place. And now it becomes the responsibility of the second generation to go and take the next battle for us. We praise you and we thank you for what God has done in your communities. But now help us to go forth from that place, from that bunker, out into the world. Whether it's into all the corners of the world, whether it's into the cities, whether it's into the lost of, the, of maybe the white population, whether it's into the places that is so desperately needing the gospel, the second generation needs to be those not staying in the bunker, but moving forward. Would you pray for us as the second generation to be those not lost, not lost in the sight of Exodus, but those who will be on the front lines of battle with you, taking the next step for the immigrant churches. Thank you.